Hello everyone, Darren here and welcome back to Manor Lords. Previously, we had quadrupled our population from a meager 18 to a more respectable 65 across 20 families, finally kicking the snowball into gear. But we still have an incoming raid to deal with, we have the Baron's expansion and we need to speed up our growth if we're going to build our own army. That's going to require taxes and level 3 houses, so there's still lots to do. Quick reminder that you can still get future episodes early by becoming a channel member and I'm starting another series fairly soon where you'll be able to get those too. No pressure, you can still of course just support by being here, leaving a like, leaving a comment, interacting with the video and subscribing if you haven't already. Alright, let's begin. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the thriving little settlement of swords. But little is probably a bit of an understatement these days as we are swelling in size, our population quadrupled in the previous episode alone. So I thought what we could do here at the start of the episode again is re-familiarize ourselves with the overall layout and assess the situation that we find ourselves in. So currently we have 20 families residing within swords, five of which are unassigned, so they're just gonna be working on construction. We have the room and capacity to accommodate one additional family and thanks to our tasty 69% approval rating, which is exactly where we wanted to be by the way, we're growing at one additional family per month. We're obviously on the tail end of February here, pushing towards spring. And of course I joke, we do want it to be above 75% to bring in two families at a time, but I just mentioned we only have the capacity to actually take in one more anyway. Couldn't fit them if we tried, and trust me, my college days are anything to go by. Ain't as easy to fit two things in one as it sounds. So, regional wealth is also doing quite well because a lot of our houses are burgage plot level. I don't know what that joke was, by the way. I guess I'm in a bit of a good mood. <laughs> right, anyways, regional wealth is looking good. Up to 142 right now. We're gaining a little bit from all the burgage plot level twos, which are right here. Pretty much along Main Street, as I've been calling it. But we do have two on the end that aren't quite upgraded just yet. And I've been assessing which ones are ready to upgrade next. Basically, a whole row at the back here are ready to go. Now, if you remember from the previous episode, we're supposed to be getting raided. But that message has disappeared. Hopefully not anticlimactic, I assume it's ticking away in the background and we just don't have the message anymore. And I was toying around with the idea of purchasing weapons, but I don't really think we've got enough money to really make a difference. So what we're going to do is just field what we've got, which was the 20 spears and shields we were sort of given. So 20 soldiers will hopefully be able to defend against whatever comes our way. We'll see. Uh, I really don't know. But I think it should be fine. The first attack should be small, I think. Okay, so what's going on in the town at the moment? So obviously we have our residential district here in the center. We then have a little bit of industry just around the clay pit here. So we got a clay furnace, the storehouse, which is harboring a lot of our goods, the marketplace in the center, and then we're currently building a malt house. Hey, here we go. A bandit camp was sighted. Now where is that? Oh, and our timer has appeared. Ah, so there's two camps right out here. Our timer has reappeared. Seven days to go. Raiders near. Prepare for the attack. They'll be alright. <laughs> I'm just going to keep telling myself that. I don't know if they're going to be the guys that push in. They could just be a random camp that happened to appear at the same time. But either way, basically, when the countdown ends, we're going to rally our boys. Bring them to the church and see where this attack is coming from. That's the plan anyway. Right, so just to get back on the orientation of things, the malt house is under construction right here. We did just upgrade our one of our plots here to a brewery, right? So they've got a little workshop out the back there now, artisans. And they're actually fielding some weapons. So they're going to be part of the, uh, the war effort, as it were. Didn't think they would because they're artisans, but I guess, I guess they are. Good on them. All right, so because they've got the brewery at the back, we've been purchasing in barley from the trader, and we have it in stockpile. We also have a tavern, tavern, which I'm just going to pause for now. What I want these guys to do is to take the malt, make it into ale, and stockpile it for a while. And then when we're ready, we'll release the tavern, we'll release, release the drink to all, and that way we'll be able to mass upgrade a few of them at a time, rather than kind of... um running out of the supply, basically, and falling short. So that's at least the idea. So, really quickly, now that we know where everything is, just going to upgrade all of these guys. So, Burgage Plot level 1. Level 2, please. And we have this one on the side, which is ready to go as well. Do we have any more? That looks just about it. The next thing is assigning houses to do different things. These guys all have pretty nice plots at the back, and vegetables can take quite a while to grow. So, I think starting it here in February, right on the cusp of spring, is a perfect time to get the 
get the land plowed, although obviously the ground would be quite hard right now, but you know what I mean. As it starts to soften up, get the land plowed, sow the seeds, and get some vegetables growing. Uh, the ones in here, we're probably going to have them mostly be workshops, and maybe at the back we'll have goat pens, because I was looking at the development tree, we did get advanced skinning, which gives you extra meat from goat pens. So we should probably lean into that as well a little bit. I don't know if there's sanitation in the game, because there is an overlay called smell, work in progress. So I don't think it's actually in the game right now, but you'd imagine maybe the little livestock pens is probably not the nicest thing to live near, but I guess at the moment it doesn't really affect much. Now, one last thing that I wanted to change from the previous episode was I've been thinking about where are we going to expand next in terms of resi residential districts. So our marketplace is here. I'd very much like that to be the kind of central hub of the town as well as the church. So I'm going to build the next houses kind of around in a semicircle around this way around the church. Now, the iron deposit is sort of blocking that, so we'll have to basically just do a road, which I assume is got to maybe come down this way. And just connect in. Something like that. So we'll have a nice big fat row of houses here. And then we'll start wrapping them up around that way. But something I wanted to do right now is build another lumberjack hut. Because we want to clear some of these extra trees if we're planning on going around that way. So we did have one here before. Sorry, a logging camp I should say. Uh, but I cleared it thinking that I wasn't really going to go out this way any further. But then, you know, in between episodes when I reassessed and reevaluated the situation. I think having another one there would be good. And we've got a big pile of logs here anyway from the old one that the oxen are still kind of going back and forth to. So, whew, that's a lot, but that's the situation as it currently stands. Of course, the last thing to touch on is we built our manor in the previous episode. And we're not really going to do anything to it now. I was thinking, like, oh, do we have time to upgrade it and build a wall just in case this attack is particularly vicious? We've only got 13 planks, so no is basically the answer to that. Uh, last thing to mention as well, actually, with the 65 population in total, I've named everyone after channel members. So if you are a channel member of the Senator or Caster tier, you're pretty much in the game now. And uh, once we get a higher population, the next episode will start filtering in some of the Tribunes as well. So just shout out to the channel members supporting series. I really do appreciate it. So it's a small little way of paying you guys back, getting you noticed. And it also makes me care about the people a lot more. I don't want anyone dying. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, what now? Maybe we'll just pull back. We'll speed up time. There's two days to go. So an interesting thing on the time scale. That's normal speed. The next one is times four. And the one after that is times 12. So it, like, jumps really quickly, actually, as you speed up. It's not just double and then triple, as I've been calling it before. And I've been kind of getting to know the people a little bit more and where they work and where their stalls are and which ones have stalls and which don't, who are the construction workers of the town. It's been quite cool kind of doing all that and getting familiar with it. What the hell is that, man? <laughs> I can appreciate it's built on the edge. Bit of an awkward one to get into. So yeah, basically all of these have to be lined up with extra logs and then improved. Now when they all become level 2, that's just going to be more and more regional wealth for us. The next development... Milestone is having three level three burgage plots. So in order to do that, we want to basically get them the tavern online, but also have someone making shoes. So that'll be the next thing as well. Now, we've just saw an enemy unit has been spotted, so I believe this will be the attack. And they are coming in from the same region where that camp popped up. So the very south, southwest of where we start. Looks like they're coming in right from off map. <clears throat> All right, excuse me, sorry. So I've got a little bit of a cold at the moment, so every now and then I'm just having like a coughing fit, trying to cut out as much of the grossness as I can. But really quickly, what I wanted to do here was explain just briefly how the army system works as I understand it right now, because it's a little bit different than it is in other games. So we created in the previous episode a new unit by clicking this, you choose which unit you want, and it's based on what equipment you actually have. So we were given 20 spears and 20 large shields. Uh, so we're able to make a spear unit. However, we can't make a full unit. You can see it's 20 out of 36. And that's because we have the 36 people ready to go. That's why I was boosting the population as much as I could in the previous episode. But we don't have all the weapons to equip them all. And rather than just have 16 people waiting on the sideline, waiting to pick up a weapon, very Soviet style, uh, instead it just gives you the, you know, you only field what you can actually equip. So because of that, we'll have a unit of 20 men here, with 20 spears and 20 large shields, and they're going to be rolling out when we hit rally. So we'll let time play now. I'll bring them out towards the side of the church. And we should see them kind of flooding down the streets, out of the houses, things like that. All with the equipment. I think the game does just give people some equipment. 
Uh, if it's in their house, like it teleports it to the person if they're particularly far away. But some people I've seen do run into houses and grab it. But they do it very quickly, so I think it might be a case of literally just hitting the house and then you have it and they kind of run out. Still pretty cool though. I love it. Love that they have their own equipment. They store that equipment in their houses. You can see it uh, when you're checking in on them. Uh, now the other one is the retinue for swords. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Our town is called swords. They don't actually... Some of them might have swords, but I don't think... We choose their equipment in the customization screen. Now this is one thing I'm not too sure about. Do we have to supply them with the materials in the same way? Or is this like a free unit that you just get because you have a manor? Now in here, we have two families living here and it says that they are servants. It often says that they're, yeah, it's there, it says that they're servant. Are they the retinue? I'm not sure. So I guess I don't have all the answers with, with that. So you can let me know in the comments if you know any more than me, but it does say the capacity is up to 12. So we'll just send them out here for a second. Because they've got particularly, like, high-tier gear, it looks like. But I didn't equip them with that, and I've never seen it in the building, like, in the inventory. Whereas you do see the inventory of the houses having the shields and swords and spears or whatever, you know? Right, so I'm just going to turn off running, because these guys will lose a ton of fatigue getting up there if we told them to run. Uh, so, let's just... I guess we can click that. What you can do is hold... Is it control? Yeah, control, and then... I'll tell them to go here. Control, and then right-click, and we can draw a line. And they'll follow the path up to here. So they'll make their way up there now. Let's check out for time how are we doing. So we can actually see the raiders just over there. 18 of them. So we actually outnumber them. That's pretty good. Oh, they've just disappeared. Oh, there they are. Bunch of scallywags. Enemy units being spotted. There they are. 106 effectiveness. Okay. So we've got our 20 here. Our little rabble. Let's organize them. So put them in a nice line right around here. Just tell them to walk. Stand your ground as well, please. So stand your ground says soldiers try to stand their ground. Defense is doubled, but attack frequency is halved. So they just kind of hold, I guess. The other formations, just for those who are wondering, give ground slowly pushes the formation line backward, luring the enemy to follow. Missile alert, soldiers watch for enemy missiles. Chance to avoid or block enemy missiles is doubled, but defense, melee defense is halved. And then we have balanced stance, default stance with no bonus and no penalties. The one we just looked at, and then we have push forward. Soldiers will try to push with their full force. Alright, they're pretty close. I might have to tell that retinue to run, actually. I was maybe a bit too slow on the draw. Where are they now? They're halfway up the street. Should we run the rest of the way? I might be a bit tired. Get going, boys. See, they're running uphill. It's only very slightly, but it actually has a massive effect on their fatigue. And fatigue just immediately harms their effectiveness, so I just didn't want it to be totally ineffective. Time to go there and just cut in around that way. Who's this guy? Drummer boy. <laughs> it's got a funny name being next to a little warband here. Oh, there they are. They're right there. Oh, he's ringing the bell, man. He's ringing the bell. All right, just tilt yourselves just a little bit. What the hell was that? We're getting serious now. The women are screeching. She, uh, hang on a second. Is she okay? All right, hold ground. Let's do this. Race. Alright, run around the sides. Wow, they sound like they're from 40k or something. They must be the helmets. Oh, we got one guy kind of backing off here. He spotted my plan. We got a 3v1 situation here. <laughs> I'm hoping we actually see some blood on the snow. And not from my numbers. Right, we still have 20, they've got 18. So we have 25 and they have 18 in total. Seven man advantage. Although three of our boys are here stuck. Oh my god, there you go. That's what you like to see. <laughs> Good job. Confirmed kill for the retinue. We'll see that hopefully in their stats screen afterwards, actually. They're down to 15. They've lost three already. So hard to see who's with who. Right, I'm going to tell my guys, no longer go defensive. Push forward. Get aggro. Get in the, up in their faces. That's what we like to see. See you later, you sons of bitches.
All right, we did it. Ring that bell. <laughs> I don't know. This <laughs> is some sort of victory chime. All right, I guess that's basically it. So we could pursue. I don't think you can pursue those guys, but we could actually push into the neighboring territories and go for perhaps some of the camps that are there. You earn money from them when you take them out, but they are protected. So I'll leave it for a little while. I'd like to just get one full unit, and then we can go out and run around or even hire some mercenaries. But let's just disband. Let these guys get back to work. Some of them are actually going to pick up the bodies. Yeah, there's no body um, model, unfortunately. I mean, there's bodies on the ground, but for carrying them, I mean. So what they do is they actually take them to the church and bury them there. Um, now, villagers want to be buried in the church, it says. But corpses from bandits and other things, they can be buried in a corpse pile, I think it's called. Uh, not sure where that is. Just bear with me while I try to find that. Yeah, there we go. It's in the residential tab. Corpse pit. Not all deserve to be buried on consecrated ground. Use this building to get rid of any raider corpses quickly. And workers become grave diggers. So that's what we noticed in the previous episode, that the people working the church are grave diggers. Uh, and you can actually see just there. Storage, a dead body. A transitionary resource. I don't know if it ever fills up. There's no, like, um, you know, inventory space or anything. We just see them kind of working away. Maybe we do see these appearing. I didn't actually notice if they were there before or not, the little crosses. So we'll we'll see when she adds her one, actually. Yeah, there we go. So maybe you do fill it up over time. Not sure how that works, but we'll, we'll learn, I guess. All right, easy. Easy first little defense. First little attack, not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Uh, so something I wanted to check was the granary. Have we made any... Wow, we've got a lot of meat, actually. 77. We're still... It's still snowing. And we have our Burgage Plots level 2. They're pretty much all ready. So, what I wanted next was the Cobblers. Right, Cobbler Workshop. Enables production of shoes. So that's going to fulfill the second requirement we have for clothing, right? Because we need shoes, clothes, or cloaks. And we already have leather and linen and yarn. So this will be a bit more bespoke. But it means we're taking, again, a kind of family off the table. They're going to become artisans and just kind of stick in here and do their thing. What does that do? Taylor's Workshop. That's clothes and cloaks. I wonder what the difference is. Why, like, why would you go with one versus the other? You know, they're both refined from leather, I think. That makes two types of things, though. Hmm. I'll go with the shoes for now. We'll try to have a variety of everything, I guess. Oh, I suppose that's probably why, right? Later on, you probably need a mixture. That's probably the answer. I guess just right now, we don't. Right, so this will be the brewery. Um, the one next to it will be the cobbler shop. This one at the moment is just doing a little bit of chickens. I would like to put down some of our money, actually, to get more chickens. So we did all the vegetables out this way. Oh, did I miss that one, actually? Yeah, I did. Let's do vegetables in that plot, too. So we should see them out there plowing the fields now, because it's just getting to springtime. Um, and just like regular farms, when you're actually building regular farms, you can kind of see the stages that it has to go through, right? Plowing, sowing, growing, and harvesting. Uh, and they go through those stages for houses. You just don't have a direct kind of UI to see which stage it's in. But it's obvious when you look at it, so it's not a big deal. All right, cool. So yeah, let's start planning out the next expansion. Like I said, we're probably going to do it somewhere here. Um, in fact, I might just change that road a little bit to be a bit neater. And follow those contour lines maybe a bit more directly. Something like that. And residential. Let's go with the Burgage Plots. We'll just start maybe on this little snap point here. Does that work? Seems okay. That's a lot of little houses with the little things at the backs, at their back. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Smaller plots, I guess. Do I mind? Maybe I could just bring it back a little bit. Or, sorry, bring it forward a little bit. Have a bit more in there. So a little bit tilted, but bigger plots. I like the look of that. Let's go with it. Quite compact, though. All kind of next to each other. Um, but yeah, so we're going to have the iron deposit and iron mine up here for quite a long time. But then eventually when it is cleared, you could then fill that with more houses. And this little clay spot will be gone in no time. There's only 49 left. Uh, no one's working it right now, actually. We stopped clay production because we have 97 roof tiles. It's like more than we need for a long time. Uh, and just because of that, uh, we're saving on some of the families. But once it's removed, then we'll put big block of houses in here as well. All right, 
Things are looking good. Everyone's out their backyard planting away. And we can see for the level 2 settlements, what are we missing? So that second tier of clothing and the tavern. Granary has meat in it. The tavern is disabled. The malt house needs a family on it. So now we can actually take in that barley and convert it. Can we see how much barley we have, actually? We've got 12. We should have 15, actually, but I think it only shows me... Yeah, let's just click this button. There we go, 15. So that button basically switches between the goods that are stored and the goods that are actively going into something else. So obviously three have been designated to go to the malt house right now, and that's why it only says that we've 12. Uh, but obviously every time it kind of produces them, so it's already there. Wow, that was super quick. We're just going to be making malt, like, straight away. There it is. Malt. Wow, it's so fast, actually. It's great. I don't know what the conversion rate is if everything's just one-to-one. -one. I think it is. One barley into one malt. Seems likely, anyway. Anyway, so that can now go to the brewery. And then they can supply the tavern. Which should be good. I don't think they sell ale at the marketplace. I should hope not. Should go to the brewery first. All right, we'll speed up time just to get through nighttime a little bit. Let the snow clear. Ooh, yeah. So what have we got here? The forager hut. So we have berries appearing again. So we'll assign a family to that. And the hunting camp still has just one family, and they've got a stall set up right now. We also have a logging camp out here, let's not forget. We have the trading post, so what can we do with trade? Let's adjust the food amounts just a little bit. Going to bring the reserve up to 60. Because our population is growing, so I feel like we need a stronger reserve. Um, but what we could maybe look to import would be more... Ooh, we could sell leather, actually. Yeah, leather's renewable, so pretty good price. Six export, that's all right. So we'll set up a trade route for that. And we'll set the it to be export, and we'll set a target to be, I don't know, just even for now, something quite high, 100, because we have 150. Another ruler's army was sighted. Hopefully it's nothing to do with us. <laughs> What's going on here? Work area is empty for this logging camp. We'll turn off, actually, the limit. There you go. Man, look at this place. I love it. I'm really attached to my town. <laughs> I really like it. How's the firewood situation? 82? We don't have any charcoal at the moment. And yeah, 149 leather. That's kind of crazy. I've been getting a lot. But we did specialize in picking up little bits of extra hides and stuff. So that seems like the tannery is just churning through it right now. Good for them. All right, so now we have 27 living space in total. Oh my god, these have gone up so quickly. That was so fast. Wow. And the logging camp is up as well. Sweet. So we'll get another group on that, and we'll set their work area to be here, just to clear some of these trees. I guess the trees in the gardens don't get destroyed, which in some ways can be kind of nice, but obviously it's not, as, not very readable. Uh, we've got a hitching post there and a small stable, so that... Oh, they'll just do what they need to, won't they? Still not sure what horses do. I know that there is cavalry in the game, so I assume horses can be used for war and military units. But, you know, it says that you can have a horse here. So I wonder, does it make traders come and go quicker or something? Because you can see that your people have to transport and, like, send stuff off. So maybe lighter loads can be carried via horseback. You'd think that the oxen are needed for, like, massive timbers, but maybe... Timber. But maybe the horses are just used as, like, pack animals almost, where they can carry smaller things. Well, I kind of want to save my money for a little bit, but I'm just kind of curious, yeah, what they do. Because I had to read around and just couldn't see anything about them. That's a different trader has visited us at the moment. So it'll take a while for the storage of this building to be filled up with all that stuff that we've just allocated. Uh, so what else could we get rid of? Or even import, right? So we can't really make any of the agriculture up in this region specifically, but when we get another region, we can. We could, but it just wouldn't be very efficient. I feel like our time is better spent on other things, even if it's ch cheap AF. We do get a lot of meat. So materials. Hides, wooden parts, linen, iron ore. Hmm. Iron slabs. Four apiece. Six apiece for leather seems really good, and it's called a major trade. Interesting. Commodities. Yeah, we could actually sell some of the shoes or the tools we end up making when we refine it from iron. I don't know if this game is like Banished, where tools actually speed up efficiency. I haven't seen that anywhere. It never mentions it, it's just something I kind of assumed. And then the military side of things. 
That's obviously what we want to be doing, setting up these trade rates. It's nice to see that they're all capped to 25 because of that perk we got. So otherwise, they're like over 100 sometimes. It's kind of crazy. And it'd be good to get livestock in as well. And really specialize in hides and stuff. Resource stolen by bandits, some firewood and some hides. Yeah, I think we need to go clear out those camps, don't we? I really just want to make some money before we do that, though. So we can send mercenaries rather than potentially having our population murdered. Uh, would be ideal. We're up to 70 approval rating now. God, the place is so nice when the weather's good. So something I want to check on is how's our granary? Do we have any ale yet? We have some herbs. Oh yeah, forgot about that. We could sell that. We have ale inside of the brewery. Now to upgrade, what are we going to need? We'll need planks, logs, and roof tiles. So I need to make sure I have 8, 16, 24 planks in reserve. Once we get 24 planks, we can upgrade three at a time. Uh, when we activate the tavern. Do they have what they need in terms of multiple clothes? They do. So that's already sorted. It's just the tavern now. And we need 25 regional wealth. So we'd have enough for two. So we need a little bit more regional wealth. And we need a little bit more planks. And then we're basically ready to upgrade three of these properties into tier three burgage plots, giving us another development point. Nice. And they have malt in there. Yeah, they're working on it. In fact, sorry, we should really zoom in and have a look at it. It's this one here, right? They're working away. Dapper Daddio, the brewer, and Jay Hartbeebe, another brewer as well. They're stirring that plank like nobody's business. <laughs> it's early access, guys. Come on. Chill. Chill. Early access is like such a good defensive term for games, where it's like anything's wrong with it, people are just like, hey, it's early access. But it is true. <laughs> Nice, we can see some of our vegetables growing now. Looking good. A shame that they're in the shade, but you know, still good, I guess. Um, all right, we'll just speed things up. We're really just waiting on more families to arrive just to fill out our construction a bit better. The market's getting a bit more lively now, which looks good. Wow, we're actually up to 78 right now. That's pretty great. Making planks like nobody's business as well. 27 timber, 33 planks, 180 stone. We have loads of clay tiles. I don't know why this is like grayed out, because it's normally like bright yellow when you look at it in other screens. All right. So I've just noticed we just made a little bit of extra money. So now's the time. So the tavern will enable it, put a family on it. And we'll just watch who comes over. So who do we have? The tavern keeper is James Rind. Shout out to James. And hopefully, the ale can be supplied into here now. And he can get the job going. Yeah, well, he's transporting, is he? He should be bringing it over. And so is the great engineer Khan, his wife. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's what we like to see. Barrels of ale being rolled up to the tavern. Love it. That's really cool, actually, that we can see that. That is super cool. A fire broke out. Oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Not good. Protect the ale. What do we do? What do we do? I have no idea what to do. Is it just going to keep spreading? It's raining heavily. I would hope that helps. There's a well nearby. Are they getting buckets? They are. Absolute heroes. Go, 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 go. Oh, you don't actually see them do the thing? That's a shame. You do see people use that before. Oh my god. Look at this. I just saved it there. I want to get some cinematics of that. It looks so cool. Oh my god. Get out of there. I hope it doesn't kill anybody. Andreas Pitch. James Rind. He's supposed to be in the tavern right now, but he's trying to quell the flames. Holy shit. This is awesome. I had no idea this was even in the game. It looks so good. Oh man, with the rain and everything. How did this happen? What a disaster. It just says rubble on fire. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, all the work that goes into building these things and look at it now. Just have to stop it from spreading. This is taking everyone, by the way. Everyone is coming in here with buckets of water to help this thing. Oh no, it's getting worse. Roll that barrel away. Keep it away from here. It's going to explode. I don't think ale does that, but anyway. <laughs> Keep the barrels away! God damn it, are you looking at this? <laughs> <laughs> you 
you look, they look so good. Wait, what's going on there? Oh my god. This music is too chill. I might put on some of my own. Oh, look at him. He's just walking in. He's like, yeah. Jason Johnson there. He's like, yeah. You got a bit of a problem on your hands. Wow. It looks awesome, though, doesn't it? You know, in the most disastrous way. But the fact that the roof is kind of burnt out first, how good is that? I can't believe they haven't shown this yet. I've never seen him post any clips on Twitter or anything like that. This looks amazing. Oh, no. All right, guys. Super unfortunate, but it looks like we've had a crash. The first crash of the game, actually, ever. And it kind of makes sense, considering what was happening. But it looked so awesome. So basically, this is the save file that I loaded, or saved, right as we were looking at the fire right around when the camera was here. If I open up the save files, you can actually see, right? This is where the camera was. We saw people running out to the fire. This is the one I've loaded, just right now. But loading in, we can see that the fire is gone. So I've loaded it again, because I just obviously saw that myself. And then I was like, oh. And then I'm coming back now to tell you what I've just seen. So... It seems like the fire is still there, because people are, like, putting it out, kind of. <laughs> Don't know when that's going to stop, but hopefully soon. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. It looked so cool, like, seeing the destruction of the house and the roof falling apart and everything. But, um, yeah, it wasn't to be, I guess. Or maybe... I don't know if it always crashes, or if it's because we were looking at it specifically. You know, I don't know. I guess we won't know until we have another fire. Which could happen, I'm pretty sure... One of the other buildings was catching fire, too. It kind of looked like it, but it's hard to know. Uh, but anyway, we'll just speed up time. I, what we were waiting for to get back to the swing of things is... And I assume I just have to rebuild this. This isn't really showing anything right now. It just says storage and priority. It just says rubble. No description, so not, not sure what's going on there. But we're waiting on the tavern to get its ale. Oh, yeah, that looks like it has it now. So with the tavern having its ale... Oh, yes, there we go. These are now all ready to go and be upgraded. So I wanted to pause time on that. Just to make sure that, yes, they can. These three can be upgraded. In fact, multiple can be upgraded. We've only got the money for three, though. So we'll do this plot, this one, and this one. All right, so three Burgage plot threes are being developed now. This one, this one, and this one. So two of them are already specialized to be workshops. We'll see how they, if they look any different, I guess. Kind of interesting to see. And I'm just going to take um, some people off this logging camp for now. And also people off this one. Just because I want a few more hands on deck just to get these things built. Tavern is supplying these people. We could throttle it and just like pause the building for a bit. Let them upgrade. It's a bit cheesy, I suppose. Maybe we won't cheese it. I think it's a bit nasty doing that. But that's how you do it, right? You pause this, wait till you have the money to do the other upgrades, and then continue. But we only need three just to get the next development point, and that's really all I'm looking to get anyway. Is that it, then? No more fires. It still says rubble, so we just go demolish now, I assume. And I guess we just fill this back in? So residential... Uh, not... Yeah, there we go. Burgage plot. Start at the coin. Can I even click this? There we go. Sorry. Got the wrong thing selected. <laughs> Just cram three in like that. I guess you could. Now we'll go with one again. Get him back in. Low priority on that though, please. We want these ones to be upgraded first. Right, so these have been upgraded to level three. That one looks like it's already quite big. Oh, I like the look of this. A lot more stonework going into it, which is nice to see. Now, what we could also do with these ones is expand them to have that additional house on the other side. And they should still be level 3. So it'll be interesting to see what they look like when, the, when all is said and done. If they catch fire, that'd be devastating. Because there's so much time and effort has gone into upgrading these. Alright, we'll speed it up as we zoom out. Oh, interesting. It looks like it's doing the the sub house expansion anyway it looks like it's doing that anyway yeah so normally if you want to do the little secondary plot you click this expand living space right and we could do it for this one maybe just afterwards and this little shed thing 
will turn into another small little house. But it looks like it's already doing that for this one by itself. So maybe it's just automatic. When you get to like upgrade 3, it just utilizes the additional plot space? It does seem like that. From my previous save, I built a level 3 house before. But I had the expansion built on already. So I thought that wouldn't actually appear until then. But it looks like it's there now. So this one is the brewery. That's a standard burger plot, and this one is going to be a cobbler shop. So we'll see if they look any different. I doubt they will, but I'm just kind of curious if like that's part of the workshop or not. They look good though. What are you carrying? Transporting roof tiles. Okay. Looks cool, a lot more wall-to-wall -wall now, so our little market street, as I've been calling it, is going to look sick. Oh wow, the roof is just on, pretty much. Fourteen shoes, sixteen herbs, and eleven ale, the commodities that we currently have. Interesting. we just kind of, you know, take our time, zoom in, enjoy the building process. Especially these bigger houses look awesome coming together. Still under construction. Not done yet. It's only halfway done. Wow. That one says it's further along, weirdly. Might just be waiting for certain material to get those final touches. How cool is this? Look forward to getting the development uh, point. And then we're going to be waiting on that to be built after the fact. Oh my god, this looks so cool. This looks so sick. This street's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I don't know if it was intentional or not, the way they're like wall to wall basically with each other, but I love it. Love that look. Oh, you know what? The original house is now the one on the right, and that's the small plot. So maybe that can be upgraded. We'll see soon enough. It's just about to get dark though, unfortunately for the finalization of the build. How's the tavern doing? Do we still Are we still providing ale? I can't imagine it lasts that long. <laughs> we have 10 ale, actually, at the moment, so maybe it'll s stay in supply for a little while. I'm hoping to sell a lot more leather so we can get the wealth going so we can just keep upgrading more of these to level two, uh, level 3. Just have a few of them, because they provide twice as much wealth, you know, two wealth per month, which is quite nice. So Jerry Kirchhoff is pedaling far and away, he's going home, Jeremy B is waiting at the trading post. And what's been stored here? Nothing, but how much... Yeah, because we've got 147 leather. I'm just surprised that more people haven't loaded this place up with leather, because that's what we've listed. Yeah, we've said that the desired surplus is 100 and we're exporting, so they should be bringing 47 leather down here. Um, but they might need maybe just more people. Because, yeah, Jeremy B is transporting. I can imagine he can only carry as much... Only carry so much, you know? Man, he's looking very dapper. Alright, we got our first one done. Construction upgrade complete. Burgers plot 3. This one actually finished first, even though it was... Looking like the one that was furthest furthest away from being finished. So now that that's done, expand the living space. Right, so it's going to be built onto the right side now. So that's so weird. So it's like they've shifted over to the left, and then the additional house goes on the right. Okay, at least that answers that question. Oh, we just made some additional money. 50 regional wealth. So again, let's upgrade to level 3. And this one needs more timber. We'd, oh yeah, we took people off that. Damn. Get people back on. Take them off the saw pit. Looking good, though. Clothing stalls. Another clothing stall has been set up. Selling shoes, no doubt. I would assume. I love that the market's just like growing organically. It looks so cool. I wonder uh, what the situation is with vegetables. Oh yeah, we're starting to get a little bit of a harvest now already. It's only May. I didn't think we'd get the harvest till like uh, September or something. 
Oh, the brewery is finished now as well. So again, for these guys, expand the living space, or should we keep the... Yeah, expand it, why not? <laughs> Alright, this is awesome. I'm just loving looking at these buildings go up, but I suppose we should try and focus on other things. I don't know. Although, what can we really do? We've met the approval rating, 78%, so we're bringing in two families per month now. We've got 22 families in total, with room for 34. So, we've got plenty of extra living space. Supplies are a little bit low, though. Food can last us nine months and fuel only three. So I suppose that's what we should really maybe focus on next. The Woodcutter's Lodge. Maybe uh, get yourself out there and get chopping. Pantry is full for the hunting camp. Another ruler's army is sighted. The berry deposits. Can't get, them, can't get through them quick enough. Oh no, exposed stocks are getting soaked at the hunting camp. Oh no, there's just meat sat out there. Why is that not being taken to the granary, huh? You're too busy. I mean, I guess there's only one granary and one family working it, but still. I would have thought maybe... Oh, there is three people transporting. They're doing their thing. Which house do they live in? They live in one of the ones that's actually been upgraded right now. They should be so lucky. <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe we should um, expand the store. Actually, storage is fine. I suppose we just need more families on it. But I really want to keep three families working on construction right now if we can. Oh, nice. We're getting our additional side plot. So this really will be wall-to-wall -wall buildings when that gets done. How good is that? Look at that. Oh my god, yes. Wall-to-wall. -wall. Love to see it. For Main Street, anyway. Further out we go, like the smaller plots and stuff out that way, they can be separate for a long time. But these ones along this street, I want them to all look the same like that. It'd be so cool. Super dense street with super thick roads. Alright, so that's that. That's as big as it gets, right? <laughs> One out of four potential families can live in a Burgage plot level three. Wow. With the additional expansion as well. Sweet. That should generate us a decent amount of money. Approval is still good. We just need to make sure that we have enough firewood, as that's the thing that's a bit low right now. And we'll have to start thinking about, yeah, just a better economy in general. I've been really just focusing on growth and food and the basics. I'd like to get more interesting things refined, like our leather and the clay tiles and all that stuff. But yeah, I just feel like we're a little hamstrung by the amount of people we have. We need just more and more. Oh, weird. This one's a different color. That one that just appeared. Oh man, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> because they were so the same, and now they're not. <laughs> it's like, you just had to be different, didn't you? There's always one neighbor on the street. That's why we need a HOA, right? Keep them all in line. And we've got our other little expansion to be built now. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going. We can see what we get at this last one, and then we'll be wrapping up for today. I wonder is there a way to check, you know, when the harvest is ready for something like vegetables? Hey, we've done it. Settlement level increased. New development points. So the next tier is having 10 level 3 plots. Wow. Yeah, so that's going to be... We can't just have, like, you know, the tavern running for a little while. That's going to be like, okay, you want to actually have this economy going and working for... Consistently, I guess, is really the word. But otherwise, they're still really happy with how this like, kind of looks. We can actually see inside just a little bit. It's a cool effect. It kind of looks like the main menu screen in there, actually. <laughs> so the brewery and stuff out the back kind of looks the same. I was kind of hoping it would be a bit more front-loaded or looking a little bit bigger. Not that I mind too much. But you'd think that when the plot expands, maybe these buildings should get bigger as well in the future. Uh, when I say in the future, I mean like in future development, if there's any time and resources that can be used to get more building plots and stuff like that, I think that'd be cool if the cobbler's shop grew alongside the size of the plot that it's on. Uh, and the brewery and all of that kind of stuff. Alright guys, I think I'm going to have to leave it there. Currently we've got four Burgage plots that are level three. One of them is just, just about to be done construction in a second, this one here. And two of them have additional plots crammed in there. And we can see they're just slightly different looking. But still, we got the effect that I was going for the first episode, which was I wanted wall-to-wall -wall kind of buildings for this main street. And we'll get that on this side as well in the future. It's just all about, like, kind of bringing that all up to speed, getting everything leveled up. 
but ultimately still want to grow a lot more. 75 is good and everything, but we should be up to two, 300, I'd say. And have loads of families all working. We want to get some farms going. And then we want to start thinking about expanding into nearby territories. Our rival, Hilda, still has only just taken one extra territory. Um, we also want to get a good iron production going and then start making our own weapons. We can start to think about doing that now that we have these big plots, I think. Uh, so yeah, shouldn't be too long. I think in the next episode we'll start either getting mercenaries or getting iron going and then pushing out and taking some of these bandit camps because you can actually earn money from them. So be worthwhile doing that, I think. I think we're about ready now that we've defended ourselves from the first attack. So yeah, that's going to have to be it for this episode. I, I loved it. I love it. This, ta this, also this game is awesome. This town is awesome. Love it. <laughs> Alright, that's going to have to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you enjoyed the video, please do consider becoming a channel member to get instant access to future videos. Of course, it's greatly appreciated if you just like the video, subscribe for more, let me know your thoughts, and let me know what you'd like to see next, more of, less of. That feedback is very important. That's all for me, and I'll see you in the next one.